Hello and welcome to this Air Hauler 2 tutorial series. Today we're going to be running through how to buy and sell aircraft and how to look after your aircraft. Uh, a reminder that this has been conducted on the X-Plane 11 version of Air Hauler 2, uh, but it's totally applicable to both the FSX and P3D versions because they're all pretty much identical. So let's get into it. The first thing I'm going to do is just talk through the ways that you can obtain an aircraft. And there's actually four ways. You can actually buy a brand new aircraft, a second-hand aircraft. You can also lease an aircraft. And the third option is you can go ahead and um, construct an aircraft. Now that fourth option right there, I'll talk about that in a separate video when we cover factories and construction. But let's cover off those first three right now. So here I am up in the Marketplace tab up the top here. And you see we've got the aircraft icon and you click on that right there. Uh, and you've got two options down the right hand corner here. Bottom right hand corner you can either buy or lease an aircraft. Now all the aircraft that you've got in the game right here are listed. And it's got all the pertinent details, how fast they go, how much cargo and passengers they can carry, how, how far they can fly. And also the very important one, how much they cost. And you can sort that by... Uh, by the most uh, down to the list or the other way around. So you can filter that, or I should say sort it pretty easily. So what we're going to do in, for that right now is let's just go ahead and purchase a Cessna 152. It's really straightforward. You just click on the aircraft that you would like to purchase and press buy aircraft. Would you like to buy this for 150 grand? Yes, we've got heaps of money in the bank because that's what we did. Now you can actually purchase it for your personal fleet, uh, but obviously we're dealing with the uh, company side of it, so let's go company. And you can configure it for either passenger or for cargo. Now what I would say, uh, if you missed my last episode, is unless you're definitely only going to be doing cargo, I'd recommend configuring them from passenger because as a passenger configured aircraft, you can actually ca you can actually carry both cargo and passengers. It's slightly less cargo you can carry because you've got to account for the seats and other stuff that's in there. But um, you can definitely um, carry both. Whereas if you've got it configured as cargo, you can only carry cargo. So let's go for passenger, you selected. Uh, and so now that aircraft has been delivered uh, to my home base of NZWN. Now you do go ahead, we've covered this before, uh, how to configure your aircraft. Uh, we'll just do one class of uh, economy. This has only got one seat in it, so it's very easy. Change configuration, okay. I don't have a type rating, we're not going to worry about that. I covered that off in a previous video also. But if we go up into our uh, company information fleet now, you can see we've got our Cessna 152 sitting right there. So you have purchased an aircraft, nice and easy. Now, if you want, let's cover now how to sell an aircraft. We might as well throw that in here. So if I went ahead and decided to sell this aircraft, uh, I'd go click on the aircraft right here. And up the top here, you go sell aircraft. One thing you'll notice is you'll get a lot less for it than you did when you bought it. Sorry, a lot less than what you paid for it. Uh, so 75 uh, grand. Remember, I paid 150 grand just two minutes ago. It's lost half its value in the space of five minutes or a couple of minutes. So let's go ahead and sell that because this is just a bit of a practice. So there you go. That's how you buy a brand new aircraft. Very easy. Uh, so the second way is a used aircraft. And here goes the list of used aircraft available all around the world. So when you buy new aircraft, you just buy them straight at your base. Uh, for used aircraft are located all around the world. So the key thing you've got to know about this is if they're located way somewhere else in the world, you've got to get it back to your base if that's where you want to fly it from. Uh, and I'll show you how to do that in a minute. Uh, so as you can see here, it's just got the description of the aircraft. It's got the condition, so you've got to take that into account because it's got a low condition like this Phantom, for example, if you're going to look to purchase that. Uh, at 54%, it's starting to get quite low, so you're going to have to do some repairs. That's one thing to take into account. And of course, surprise. And you're going to find that secondhand aircraft are a lot cheaper than buying the brand new aircraft. But they do require a little bit more maintenance. Uh, so let's, um, let's just sort that by price and let's say this uh, no actually what we'll do is by location uh, and how about this no i was going to say that boeing but we do not have that much money uh, by location is where i want to be 
So NZ, so there's only one. There's only that 737 available in New Zealand. That's uh, way too expensive. But here goes Australia. That's fairly close. How about we go ahead and purchase this. Let's purchase a, no, Cessna 172. So you go ahead and you press buy aircraft. Are you sure you want to purchase this aircraft for 124 grand? Yes. Is this a company? Same deal. So you go through. So here goes the key point here. Would you like the aircraft delivered? Yes. Or would you like to collect it? No. Well, I think I definitely want them to deliver it to me. I can't be bothered flying it all that way, a couple of thousand miles. So I'll go, yes. Boom. And then it tells you where do you want to deliver it to. We want it delivered to Wellington. Delivery to NZWN will take 30 hours. So that's real time, 30 hours. Uh, so I'll get it tomorrow, um, uh, you know, tomorrow afternoon, New Zealand time. Yes, I'll accept that. So there we go. That's how you go ahead. Uh, we've purchased our Cessna. And uh, I think if we go back into our fleet from memory, uh, there we go. It says that it's in transit one day, five hours and 59 minutes. So that will just count down and uh, until it actually arrives at your base. So that's a way to pick up a second-hand second -hand aircraft from around the world. Now, the third uh, way that you can pick up an aircraft is by... Uh, you can go to uh, aircraft here and down the bottom right hand corner you've got lease aircraft. So let's go ahead and say lease the Cessna 152. So the key is you've got to put a deposit down, 18 grand, and then every month you'll need to pay $8,388. So this is a really great way to pick up a brand new aircraft uh, when you don't have all that much money in the bank. So you can pick one up and, uh, and, and get out there and do some flying. Now the good thing about this is, is that whatever you pay towards this aircraft, if eventually you decide to buy this aircraft out uh, outright, any money you've put towards it will go will be taken off the purchase price. So uh, we know that this is 150,000 uh, because we just bought it before 150,990. And this is about what 25,000 or 26,000, 27,000. So 27,000 would be taken off that price if you did decide to eventually buy this outright. Uh, so that is the other way. So there you go. That's the three ways. Uh, the three ways I'm going to cover today on how to buy aircraft. We've also covered off how to sell aircraft. Now you do lose money when you sell them, so just be aware of that. And the final thing I'm going to show you is how to maintain aircraft. Uh, so if we go into our fleet right here, uh, we'll get to the right screen. Uh, as we can see, we've just got one aircraft here and it's at 100% condition. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to quickly jump over to my other company I'm running because I've got a couple of aircraft there that are not in a hundred, that are not at 100% condition and I can show you exactly how it works. So I'll see you there in two seconds. Okay, here we are in uh, my other company, and if you take a look at the fleet here, I've got a few here, Beechcraft, Baron 58, uh, Cessna 206, and a few others. You can see that their condition is less than 100%. So let's take the Beechcraft Baron 58, and down the bottom right-hand corner here, you can uh, see that we can press the repair uh, little button right there and it brings up this screen. So there's really two things that can happen to your aircraft. There's condition and then there's aircraft systems and equipment. So your aircraft condition is just a general overall condition of the aircraft so it's 79% whereas your aircraft systems and equipment is where a specific component of your aircraft has failed or broken and that can ha happen randomly uh, throughout your travels. So to go ahead and repair it, you could either partially repair if you don't have enough cash, or you can full repair, and that's what we're going to do. Now the bottom here is that if you, uh, the price to repair it is that if you uh, repair it at your base, uh, it's going to give you a discount. So you, as you can see right here, it's, it's, it's pretty much half price. So carry out the repairs. Now, sorry, just before I carry out the repairs, so obviously if... The system or uh, equipment need a repair you just tick that and then you go out and carry out the repairs so but in this case here it's just the general condition so let's carry out the repair yes and it's back up to a hundred percent so we're going to do something a little bit different for the Cessna 206 here uh, the first thing we're going to do is take out insurance. Remember that we um, in the last episode or the one before I can't remember what it was uh, we we uh, talked about taking out insurance. Well, that helps you cover the cost of uh, doing things in the game uh, when it comes to fixing your aircraft. So for the Cessna 2, 206, it's going to be three grand a month. So I'm going to go, yes. 
insurance has been purchased. And so now when we go to repair, and we've got the screen here, 84%, same deal as below. Uh, we've got no components that require fixing, so we go carry out repairs, and here goes the difference right here. Use insurance. Pay 5% excess and the insurance company settles the rest. Note, claiming on insurance increases premium and you may become uninsurable in the future. So it's just like the real world. Uh, so if we decided to repair this using insurance, um, it would only cost us $303. And the um, and the insurance company would uh, cover the rest of this. Now, given that it's only two grand, um, it's not a massive repair. So I'm going to say no, don't use insurance. But for a major repair, I would totally recommend using insurance. But if you use it too often, you might lose your insurance, or it might become exceptionally ex expensive. So just be aware of that right there. So that's another way um, that you can uh, repair your aircraft. Now the third thing, and I did cover this off. Uh, in a previous video, but I'll just talk through it again, is that uh, you do have to do maintenance checks every so often. So you got to do an A check at 50, every 50 hours, a B check every 100 hours, and a C check every 300 hours. So once we get to 50 hours in this aircraft, another 48 more, we go ahead and do our A check. Uh, then uh, once we get to 100, we'll have to do both our A and our B check because you'll have your second A check and your first B check. Hopefully that makes sense. But Here's the key. If you've got two that are close together, you just do the higher one and that will automatically take care of the lower one. So you don't have to do, if they're both due at the same time, don't do both, just do the higher one and uh, the second one will be taken, taken care of. So there we go, ladies and gentlemen. That's how to manage your fleet. As you can see, there's a little bit to it. Um, it's mostly pretty straightforward and it comes down to really the financial position of your company uh, and that will really determine what you look to do. Early on, uh, you might decide to, depending on uh, what uh, level you started on, whether you started on an easy level with heaps of cash in the bank or a harder level with less, uh, you might decide to either go and lease some aircraft or you might go ahead and buy some aircraft. Now, given that cargo jobs uh, allow you to uh, get some money in the bank pretty quickly if you do a bit of flying, then you know it probably isn't going to be too long before you can afford to uh, purchase aircraft. Uh, so there we go. If you've got any questions, make sure you uh, put them down in the comment section below. I do appreciate all the support in this series. Uh, if you do enjoy it, please smash that like button. Uh, subscribe if you are new. And until next time, everybody, take it easy.